What's up? It's your boy Carcino. Let's talk about it. Now, when Pac first came around, like, all the groups that nobody really knew, like, back in 94, 93, that time, before he got shot, he knew the Fugees. Wyclef, all these guys. Because he was hanging out with Jack. So he knew, he seen Wyclef with Jack. He saw these young dudes coming up. And he knew that most of the Haitians, if not all of them, knew Jack. Or they knew Jimmy. So, it was up. Now, the realization didn't kick in for a long time because there's so many people out there that keep making, like, this into a big thing. Um, and thank you for the Cash App donation. Carcino is the name on the Cash App. Thank you. I appreciate that. I was looking into it because I wanted to know, like, man, was there more? Because I was like, I remember Pot walked straight past Wyclef. And then, man, he, he basically looked him up and down in disgust. And, like, walked past him. Yeah, security and everything by that time, but... He ain't had no respect for them, especially Wyclef. His problem wasn't with Lauren Hill. It was mostly with Clef. But see, what he knew at that time is what I knew. And the world didn't know at that time that she was linked, that Lauren was linked with Wyclef, and they date, and they didn't date no more and all this stuff, but they was dating, and how that started to mess up, you know, with his personal life after the fact, Wyclef. Pac knew all that, so Pac would have went in on the Fugees and would have would have ethered them. Now, I believe it was I think it was when he came home like Prize was the only one that Pac was cool with or cordial with. That was it. Prize. Not Lauren. Damn sure wasn't Wyclef. Clef had too much connections with Jimmy and Jack. And he was taking shots at Pac all on the Fuji's score out. He was just throwing shots all through the album. Pac heard it. That's just, it's just clear as day. So, for the person that sent the cash app, I told y'all, I, I addressed this before. But no, he saw him, he walked right past him. But when he was staying in the, in the psych ward, because when he came to New York, Shug got to make sure he was straight. So, he wanted to do Saturday Night Live. They're going to make sure Pac had the best security. Because that's huge if you get on Saturday Night Live. So, when Tupac came to appear on Saturday Night Live, everybody wanted to know when or how he was getting there. 
Pac was already in town and people didn't even know. He didn't come outside. He didn't go anywhere. He was at the psych ward. And I think Proz was the one that visited him. Proz and just a few people knew where he was. It was crazy. But, uh, no, nah, Proz, he was cool with for a minute. But I think he had already made a song dissing him. But him and Proz was, like, he met up with Proz and they was back good. Like, him and Proz was, like, he never should even diss Proz. But why Clef? Nah. He had no respect for him. Pac showed Clef love. You know what I'm saying? Back in those days. Like, Pac was way bigger than him. Because when they first was coming out, you know, they was, they Haitian, so... A Haitian dude with a machete, you know, that's not unusual to see that. You know, here a machete is something that Jason used in a, in a horror movie. But where they from, a machete is, it's like, it's like a pocket knife. It's a utensil for cutting fruit and everything, you know, it's, you know, people handle disputes. Somebody cheating in the card game. Slice! You know, they... You know, it is what it is. They just don't go around willing it to hurt people. But it's a convenience. It's an all-purpose tool. So, that's really, you know, the gist of it. You know, everything else is just uncivilized to think other than what's going on but yeah that's basically it uh did Tupac well, I don't think he did I don't think Tupac got into any real drama with any other artists like like I, I don't know why people think Pac just went around fighting all these rappers and all that He's a guy that was, the whole city of New York was basically against him. That's the way it appeared to him. So he didn't think New York had no love for him. Because of hit him up. Well, it was one line that hit him up. That messed everything up. When he said... Anybody from New York that want to bring it, bring it. But we ain't singing, we bring it drop. F you and your mom. We don't kill all you mother. So they made an article that was really dangerous. I don't know if it was Vibe or The Source. And I believe it was The Source. And it was like, Tupac talks about killing the East Coast. And I said, whoa. When I first saw that, I said, whoa. They didn't went far. I knew it. I saw that article and I said, man, that is not a good piece. Because people read titles. They don't even read the whole damn article. It was an attention grabber. It's going to grab people's attention. They don't read the article and get fucked up. So people who really wasn't even dealing with Biggie at that time because Biggie was just going through his whole everybody hating on him on the sidelines. Not everybody vibing with Biggie. Because of what? The source cover. When they got Biggie who dropped one album, and they called him the king of New York. 
other rappers in New York, a lot of them, didn't like that. Now, so it wasn't internally a situation people were comfortable with. You know, Nas never took it as seriously as it was when they had the billboard up there. That was Columbia Records. Their marketing strategy was to attach themselves to Biggie. So they were creating the animosity. A lot of people don't really know that. Columbia Records put that billboard out there. One life, one love, so there can only be one king. And they put that in New York, and they put that, that in Brooklyn. That was over the overpass. You could drive past it. They put that in Chicago. They put it in L.A. They put it up there so people could see. Like Nas is here. Uh, Laura Neal, she didn't think nothing of it. You know, she would went right back and made a diss track and went at the pock and everything else. But that wasn't really the case. She's more of a freestyle than a written form artist. And that's okay. Some people have their gifts that they really strong in. Some people are good with written raps and they are freestyle. I didn't know what 90% of what these fools was doing at that time when they made that. Oh, uh, you talking about uh, cowboys? <laughs> All these questions y'all didn't put in here is is out of the, the chart, off the chart. But yeah, Cowboys. That's the song you're talking about. No, I didn't see it that way. A lot of other people did. And that's fine by me. You know, I, I don't judge people who see things differently than me. There are a lot of things people might see differently. Or how they take as what's the going on. You know, me back in those days, I had a lot more connections of people who was in the industry. Now those numbers are dwindled because the people that's in the industry now are not even industry people. Like hip hop people. They're like like most of the people I know, most of them dead. Um, some unfortunately they're dead. And the rest are there in computer design and graphic design. I was like, damn, what you doing? Hey, what's up with you? Man, I don't do music. I'm like, what? Oh, yeah, I've been out the game. Yeah, I've been doing graphic design for like 12, 12 years now. I'm like, wow. That's a shock. So... You know, people got married and had kids, and they, a lot of them grew up. Well, no, I don't see it being like that. There was a lot of artists coming out to Tupac. Like, imagine the whole New York City. Everybody in there. So people who didn't like Big was siding with Big to go after Pac because he was the biggest thing out. And when he wasn't saying nothing, everybody else started looking at this is the lane.
Now, as far as Wu Tang go, like Ray and Ghost, they weren't really cool with Pac like that. Ghost was more liking his music more than Ray. You know, but they really had no opinions on that situation. But they didn't really like Big at all. They thought Big was a biter. You know, that's why they came out with the song Shark and Negroes. Yo, son, where's boy, son? He bit his Nas album cover, son. <laughs> Yo, these happy go lucky, man. <laughs> so, there was some underground New York groups, mixtape, everybody going after Tupac. And the Outlaws, being from Jersey, it made it hard on them. Because, see, they kept coming home. So when you keep coming home, all you hearing is people saying, like, what's up with your boy? Your boy tripping. And he like, who? They looking like Pac, fool. Who you think we talking about? He the only one tripping. He talking about killing it. He's cold. He, nah, man. So they had to go around and clarify things, even where they live. And some people just wasn't having it because Pac energy level was really towards Big Nim and the people that he had beef with. It had nothing to do with any other rapper. So he had to spend the majority of his time trying to rectify that. And that's what the One Nation album was going to be. Well, everybody got their own interpretation as to what's good and what's not good. So when you got, everybody got interpretations about what's good, what ain't, you're going to be forever put in a box. So that's just the way I look at it. You forever put in a box that you may not get out of. What do you think about Redman? He loved Redman. Tupac loved Redman music. Red didn't have a lot of enemies. Uh, Tupac didn't know Method Man. But they didn't take an aggressive stance towards the West Coast. And Pac wanted to have some East Coast on his album to show he wasn't coming out with hate. And this is the this is the part where it got strange for everybody. See, Pac, he really wasn't saying it. Like he wasn't coming out dissing nobody. People think he came out of jail and made hit him up because they was young. He didn't know. They didn't know. Hit him up came months later after the release. So when he did his Saturday Night Live, hit him up wasn't even out yet. There's no way he could have did Saturday Night Live when hit him up was out. They made hit him up. Once Biggie was coming back out with Junior Mafia. And they did the video for Get Money. And they had the remix. The Get Money remix come out. And then Pac took the beat and used that beat because that was getting heavy spins. And that's what really sparked Hit Him Up. 
the version that you heard that came out the way they did. And it, it was time to go get them. Because the radio station still had pull down in LA. No matter what threats they got, they were still playing Biggie. And then when Biggie was coming back, they was playing the new joint. Which wasn't talking about Pac at all. Pac tried to make it like the song was attacking him. Now, somebody said that Pac wanted to use that beat and Biggie knew it and made the song. So he took Pac's beat and that's why... He got news that that Pac was going to use that track. and uh, I don't know where they got that from, but he probably wanted to use that track for something. But I'm saying, look, it did not become iconic like that. And the Don't Look Any Further beat, he was ashamed that his track was used in such a way. I remember when they interviewed him and they asked him about it and he was ashamed that people could take his song and use it and make it in such a vulgar way. He didn't, he didn't like it at all. That people could just grab his music and use it. If Tupac was here today, Tupac wouldn't be rapping. Tupac wouldn't be rapping right now, I don't think. Tupac interest would be in politics or something else, acting. Tupac is somebody that can't do one thing for a very long time. He might have came back and made a song here and there. But Pac, at like 50-something, trying to rap. I couldn't see it. Well, that's just how it is. Hello? Mr. Davis. Yo. How you doing? Is this Davis? Yeah, what's up, West Coast? Oh, <laughs> you sound like fucking Mr. Davis. I don't know who the fuck that was before. <laughs> 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 Yo, what's up, West Coast? Yeah, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, how you doing? 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 Are you sort of flying for the day for the birthday party? We all celebrating our birthday party tonight. Like me and like five four stars and like Melo and everybody. Oh, Me you talking about uh, Carmelo? Yeah. What's Jackson? that? Huh? Carmelo Jackson? Oh, you talking about Carmelo Jackson? I'm gonna say. Camar Carmelo Anthony? I'm like, what the hell? Fuck you. Fuck you. We talking about some poor shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yo, yo, so what we did was, because um, all of our birthdays just lined up, like, back to back, and different days, so we're doing a big birthday that all celebrate our birthdays tonight, and we got to work next week on everybody's birthday, so. Damn. You know, but check out the flyer and see what was up. I just wanted you to check it out so you know. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me see the flyer. Yeah, that would have been live. But yeah, let me see the flyer. Just send me the flyer. Yeah, it's on my Facebook page. Just go to my page. It's on my cover. I posted it up. Okay. I know like, you wasn't going to fucking fly out here in the day. 
You know what I'm saying? But the shit is going to be happening in a, again in February for the AVN. So you be there. All right. All right, champ. All right, champ. We got <laughs> Ebony, Mystique. We got um, Alexis Fox and uh, Phoenix. Phoenix Marie. And then we got a bunch of other ones that ain't that big, but they be in the industry. You know what I'm saying? All right, for sure. All right, I'm going to check it out. All right, yeah, man, chat. All right, well. Hey, man, hey, can you make a video about how great I am? <laughs> <laughs> you be like, you know why you, you slide in that shit like Team Prince? You be like, Dad, I remember asking when he was little, when he was hitting up my goddamn page. Fucking him. He's like, who the fuck is this motherfucker? Oh my god. One day, the motherfucker started going to the bench. And he knew every goddamn. I want one of them just for me. So I can just play it for Melo and be like, God, I don't even understand who I am. Nah, don't do it. Don't do it. You supposed to be Gaddafi in the Tupac movie, man. I know. Like, a lot of things are. You know, life happens to, to real niggas. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, hey, how the fuck did I go from Gaddafi to this? Yeah, I know. That's crazy. It's because I'm a champ, and I work my ass off. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, maybe one day, you know, before I die, you know, I don't know when that, it might happen. I might die anyway. I might fall in some pussy and drown. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Hey, but hey, hey, you know, I'm trying to set myself. Alright, man, I'll let you. All right, enjoy your birthday, man. Alright, thank you, Tim. Alright. Peace. Peace. Oh, man. See what kind of, see what kind of friends I got? <laughs> oh, no, I can't fly down for that, man. Oh, gee. Now, if I'd have told you that in the hood story, you'd be like seeing those capping again. No, that's how our life is. 100 miles an hour. And you fly out one day, you know, you get calls like that. And you just fly out, <laughs> come down and kick it, and then pop back out. But they know I don't, I don't like to do spontaneous. Because I'll be having things planned. I, got, I just can't get up and just go. You know, I got responsibilities. But yeah, uh, I was trying to answer all y'all Tupac questions all at once, but I can't. So, I think the video went too long. Yeah, all this no reference, just off right off the dome. This is what we knew because we lived it. We were alive at the time, which means that we lived it, not like we were there with him when it was going down. We lived it, so it was things that we knew that we didn't have to get out of a magazine. It's not a lot of young people's fault. They didn't know. They weren't alive. <laughs> it's not it's nothing you could do about that. You got here when you got here. But during those times, it was definitely a different type of energy. So, It is what it is. God bless. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the page. I got to get to cleaning up. Can't have no dirty house. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys for the super chat, too. Because they have been blocking notifications and all that craziness. Thank you. I appreciate it. 